Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. It is Monday the 29th of September. Thank you for joining me. We've got some typical spring weather coming through this week with cold changes, but also some warmer air flows too. In fact, you might have noticed the warmer air around at the weekend, especially around the top of the country. Let's have a look at the satellite map. A, a fair bit of energy out here in the Tasman Sea this morning. Loads of thunderstorms, but as you can see, a lot of them fall apart as they move in towards the North Island. And that is because there is actually high pressure just north of New Zealand and another high just behind that front. So the front's being squeezed by two sets of high pressure, which is why it is crumbling and falling apart as it moves on in. But we saw thunderstorms along the western side of the country, or at least of the South Island this morning, and also in the south around Stewart Island, Fovo Strait and coastal parts of Southland, but many areas in the east, apart from some high cloud at times, uh, most of that dry weather is leaning to the east, and we're going to be seeing that throughout the week. Up in the tropics, pretty quiet at the moment as well, not as thundery and as wet as we saw at the end of last week. In fact, there's even a southerly flow coming in here around parts of Tonga and Fiji, and you can see why. The high pressure zone north of us is uh, dragging a southerly flow right up into the tropical areas. So your humidity may be down a little bit there, but the same high pulling air from around New Caledonia and into the top part of New Zealand, which is why it's certainly not as cold in northern areas. But you can see there is a southwesterly flow coming in around the next high, and that little line of wet weather stuck in between the two, and that is being tracked and pushed further northwards. Behind it all, messy spring light with high pressure dropping south, low pressure north, it's going to be a bit of a messy couple of weeks coming up. And that brings me to the Sudden Stratospheric Warming, SSW. Many of you have been asking me about this on YouTube for the last week or two, so I thought I'd just briefly touch on it. Unfortunately in New Zealand, NIWA through the government, they're commercial and they don't work with the private sector, so we don't have any information really other than the general understanding of what happens here. So the blue line, we often talk about the, the boundary, the polar boundary, boundary. It's called the polar vortex. Mostly it's kind of got this circular shape going around the South Pole and within it low pressure and storms that always are tracking you know south of New Zealand and Australia. What happens when the stratosphere warms up which happens from time to time around the earth with everything all moving at different levels. What happens uh, in the southern hemisphere and by the way, this doesn't happen often around the Southern Hemisphere, is it looks like this. It gets a messier shape to it, more like a star or a flower. And what that does is it sends these bursts of cold air uh, out from the poles at times, but at the same time that that happens, you get these injections of warmer air uh, coming through. So basically, think of it like a hot water bed when you lean on one side and it drops down and the other side balloons up. So that's kind of what we see is this messy weather pattern. So what does that do for us? Well, it's kind of hard to notice it because in spring around New Zealand and Australia, certainly around the roaring 40s, just uh, around the South Island area and the lower North Island, it's normal weather to be unsettled at this time of the year. So it's hard for us to kind of gauge what it's really doing at this time of the year when we're normally getting all sorts of cold fronts being thrown at us. But generally speaking, it makes for a more unsettled uh, weather pattern around Antarctica and that sends up cold fronts, uh, as well as sometimes these warmer injections. So really it enhances our spring weather pattern and may drag it out longer than usual this year. Those are the possibilities from it. Otherwise, you may not notice really a lot going on, but here is seven o'clock this evening, that front moving up the, the country, sort of stuck between these two highs. Uh, and so there may still be a few isolated thunderstorms or heavy showers and the polar airflow back again over the South Island, keeping your temperatures down. As we go to Tuesday, the polar line drops a little bit, not a huge amount, still could be a bit of a cold start before the winds pick up and then properly windy weather kicks back in again through the Southern Alps and the Southern half of the South Island. Also around Cook Strait, you'll start to feel those west to northwest winds gradually building up. Now the high pressure zones kind of merge together and you notice here on Tuesday, you've got a bit of convergence at the top of the country and what that can do is just keep it cloudy and in some areas right underneath it, it can linger longer than is forecast. And for others, nearby, it might say it's raining and then it might not. So that's one of those little areas to keep an eye on at the very top around the far north of New Zealand. Otherwise, a lot of dry weather around on Tuesday. Wednesday sees the next cold front. Apologies I didn't highlight the blue line, but that is uh, moving over the top of the South Island, sliding up Canterbury, a weak bit of low pressure in there as well. But that is being driven by 
the high, the airflow that is. So the anticyclonic wind around the high dredges up a southwesterly flow into the South Island, while the North Island has subtropical winds in some areas. And if you don't have that, you've got a good chance you've got a Norwester coming out of Australia. So as we have a, a Thursday morning, that warmer wind is stuck over the North Island, not the South. So we've got frosts returning, and in fact, they could become uh, right around the, the coastal areas. Certainly seeing some areas inland, minus twos, minus threes, maybe colder than that if you're higher elevation around the mountains. Certainly a cold start on Thursday morning for the South Island, not so much for the North Island. And that's because on Thursday, we've got the subtropical flow brushing northern New Zealand, or if you don't have that, it's coming out of New South Wales or Queensland as it drifts in over the uh, North Island. The polar boundary does slip southwards here on Thursday. Uh, that will lift temperatures up for the South Island. And the next high pressure zone, pretty weak, 1010, so <laughs> slightly below the average air pressure, but it is a little area of high pressure, and that is just going to help alter the airflows as we move in towards the weekend. And the high kind of slips out to the east, joins pretty much with that one north of us on Friday. And we've got a new low forming out on the Tasman Sea, which will drive in northwesterly winds for northern areas, a bit of wet weather around, although most places are dry because high pressure has only just moved on past. So let's go into the weekend to make sense of what is happening here on Saturday large low out in the Tasman. Now, a large low doesn't always mean it's raining for everyone because you end up with these dry, uh, large dry areas. So we'll just have to wait a few more days to lock that all in. Some rain around on Saturday though with mild winds. You know, they're out of the north. It's not gonna be cold really for anyone. And the uh, polar line drops well south of the country. So that does mean even the lower South Island will see a lift in temperatures going into the Saturday portion of the weekend, not so much the Sunday one, because the next big high here over New South Wales is stretching a ridge all the way down to the Auckland Islands, and that pulls up a southerly for you. So the temperatures will be down in Stewart Island, Southland, Otago, and potentially into Canterbury as well. It depends on how far north it goes. And then as you go into the North Island, low pressure sticking around here on Sunday, driving in a little bit of wet weather still. So some low pressure certainly around as we go into this weekend, the first official weekend of October. So from a rainfall point of view, true spring style, it's mostly in the west. So we see some larger totals around the west coast. Jump over to the eastern side and places like South Canterbury, North Otago, your rainfall totals five to 10 millimeters. So not a huge amount coming through for everyone. And it's a similar story around parts of Wellington, Wired Upper, Hawke's Bay, especially Northern Hawke's Bay, and right up around the Bay of Islands. Those rainfall totals are mostly below 10 millimeters. You might get a little more than that if that low sort of shapes the right way for you, but the rainfall totals are not overly huge as we go over the next seven days for a number of areas, but probably the right amount of balancing act. Uh, I know parts of Waikato, Taranaki, some of you have said enough with the rain already, um, so we'll see how we go with the rainfall coming up. That is all from me for today. I'll see you again tomorrow, Tuesday, with our next New Zealand update.